All right, we are on the air. This is Suhan on Filter.com. My podcast is episode 46. God, that's a lot of 40. bullshit. That's a lot of talking. <laughs> uh, my guest today, Eddie Guardado, famous Twins closer, man who pitched for several major league teams and now is back with the Twins as the big league bullpen coach. I want to thank, before we get started here, my sponsors, the local Irish pub in downtown Minneapolis, Kieran's Irish pub, downtown Minneapolis, O'Gara's Irish Pub, St. Paul. You sensing a trend here, Eddie? All places I can drink God, damn, are places that sponsor me. A lot of pubs. <laughs> Kieran's, the local O'Gara's, thank you for your sponsorship. This is the Alive and Social Network, SuhanOnFilter.com. So Friday night, I have Tori Hunter come up here. and he, Tori starts telling stories. Tori starts there telling lots of stories, like the time he almost stabbed Corey Koski to death because he, Corey... He snuck away in his back seat and jumped up halfway through his drive home. <laughs> but then Tori, you know, I said, tell me what about Eddie? And, uh, and Tori says, well, you know, we were in the clubhouse, and so we kept on noticing a pair of pink panties hanging oh, out my God. in the clubhouse. Oh, my God. And eventually we realized Eddie was not only wearing them, Eddie was, when he pitched, Eddie was pitching really well when he was wearing them. <laughs> now, here's your chance to deny it. Well, so... Uh, <laughs> That's hard to de- deny. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, Tori, man, I'm going to get him, man. There's I figured no you question, would. But, uh, yeah, that's the truth. Um, I hope my wife don't find out about it. But <laughs> <laughs> don't tell her about this podcast. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, those are the good times. So those are the good times. I don't know how many games I saved, but there, were, there was a handful I saved in a row with those things on. Is it weird? Mm, probably to a lot of people, <laughs> but guess what? It uh, I helped the ball club out in any way I can, so that's how I looked at it. <laughs> so, so where where did the idea come from? Was it a dare? It was, you know, you know, soup. Come on, in that clubhouse, everything's a dare, man. Yes, and we're grown men, and uh, kind of. When you get dared on something, guess what? <laughs> you better fucking man up. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, th- this is your chance to get Tori back. You got a story about Tori? He might not want a uh, podcast oh. on the podcast. Hey. All I know is Tori's what, 38? Uh, 39, I believe. Well, 39. Well, 38, still young. Same thing, yeah. Uh, yeah, baseball old, right? Right. Well, I know when Tori first came in, he uh, <laughs> he took off his shoes, right? I swear to God, I thought these were my grandpa's feet. <laughs> A little gnarly. I mean, these crusty ass old feet, man. And I'm like, God damn, dude! What's wrong with those fucking feet? <laughs> he started cracking up. Now, if you tell Tori that boy, he be, he be taking his shoes off, socks off, real quick, put on his spikes and socks, and he's done. I go, hey, man, we're not going out until about two hours. Why are you all dressed up so early? I know why. You don't want to see those damn ugly ass feet. <laughs> Has he has he fixed the problem? Is he Mr. Manny Petty now? No, those feet are ugly. You They're can't still fix ugly? Those. I guarantee he goes in a ped, uh, uh, get a pedicure at a store. They'd be like, "Hey, we can't help you. You get charge extra. We can't help you." <laughs> 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 but you know, it's all good, man. When and you know, soup. When you're in the locker room, it's it's a game on. You know, it not there's no boundaries. That is true. So you know, whatever comes out, whatever somebody knows. From you, from the past, or whatever it might be, we have fun with it. Yeah, well, and you are known for uh, keeping things loose and for pulling some pranks. you have a favorite prank you pulled in the big leagues? Or in <sighs> baseball at any time? Well, you know what? I've done some pranks. And I've done some <laughs> ugly ones. And I'm glad we can talk about it a little bit now <laughs> on this show. Yeah, you're out of the game. You know, I... I not I, out of I, the I game, but out, not playing. Well, right, right. Well, I don't know if you remember when I left in uh, o, o, o 04 when I went to Seattle. Um... Remember uh, Hasegawa? Yeah. Ishii Hasegawa? Yep. Japanese pitcher? Yep. And he was with us in Seattle. Mm-hmm. And he used to always come in and brush his teeth. You're not going to tell this one on the air, are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There's no boundaries here, sir. So. That's true. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> I guess not. Anyway, J.J. Putch, Jamie Moyer, uh... I mean, Kevin Napier, oh, we're on there. We're all c- kind of together in the locker room. And J- uh, J.J. Putch goes, hey, Eddie, Hasegawa comes and brushes his teeth. That's all the first thing he does in the morning. So, 
And, and, and I got to take it back here for a second. Me and Hasegawa used to go at it. Mm. Japanese, Mexican, I mean, racial. You, as racial you can get, we used to get. But it's all good, right? So I said, I'm going to get this sucker, right? So I get my tooth, his toothbrush, and I stick it in my ass. Oh, Eddie, you didn't. <laughs> you didn't. I can't believe I just said that on air. But anyway... I stick it in my ass, and J.J. Putz and Ryan Franklin, eh, Jane Moyer, they take a picture with their phone. Oh, my God. I said, hurry up, man. This shit hurts. <laughs> they took oh. it, I put it back. Here comes Hasegawa. You didn't let him. Come on, Sue. <laughs> shit. Oh, so J.J. goes, oh. hey, Eddie, come on. We can't let him. I go, J.J., if you open your fucking mouth, I'm going to fucking kill you. Or you'll get double. I'll get you somehow, some way. He goes, all right, I won't say shit. <laughs> so Asakawa comes, hey, guys. We get it. He goes in the, in the bathroom. He starts brushing his teeth. And I kid you not, Ryan Franklin and them were, uh, they were like, oh, my God. So imagine this. Brushing your teeth, locker room, in the bathroom. You got four, about four iPhones or whatever you want to call phones at the time. Show him picture, and he goes, what's that? And they go, and they can't stop laughing, right? And and Hasegawa goes, what's that? He goes, they go, that's your toothbrush in Eddie's ass. And he goes, no fucking way. No fucking (laughs) way. (laughs) Oh, my God. And I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me. I swear to God, he didn't talk to me for the whole spring training. Oh, my God. But I go, Hasegawa. Bay backs a bitch, huh? So, that's the story, man. That, that makes me afraid of you. I mean, we've always gotten along, but now I am absolutely well, afraid of you. Well, so that's just the beginning, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what else? What else? Oh, man, I got so many stories I forgot. I mean, the other day we were talking. I think you've seen us down there in the club. I was me, Dougie, uh, Chad Allen, and, and Tori. All yep. those guys were, were on the table. And we're, I go, God damn, I did that, Dougie? He goes, yeah, yeah, you did, Eddie. I mean, shit. I go, God damn, I forgot. But it's all fun, man. I've also. That's why baseball so special. Yeah, this would not happen in another, in another <laughs> sport, I tell you that. Nobody's doing that to KG right now. Right, right, right. But, oh, good Lord. you know, we have fun with it, man. But, you know, it, it bring, it's funny. It brings chemistry and laughter. And bad breath. Bad, I tell his guy with that. That's a guy with that. I see him every time. He goes, he lives in Irvine. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And where do you live? You live in Orange County. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, has he gotten we're over still it? Buddies. We're has still he buddies? gotten over? Oh, yeah, yeah. He got over it. Oh my lord. But uh, good stuff. Good stuff. I also know, that ever since your days, really even early with the tour. Well, no, I think it was more after you kind of established yourself as a closer. I know that you would go into the shower and I would hear people screaming. <laughs> oh, goddamn, Sue. Goddamn. Yeah, that's true, too. I mean, there's not too much I didn't do in the game besides, uh, I don't know. I don't think I ever went into that shower without anybody screaming at any time. Yeah. And why would that be, Eddie? Uh, let's just say we had fun. <laughs> <laughs> let's just say... I, I treated the shower like a penitentiary. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, I, I don't know, penitentiary, you know, hey, this is my head. This is my domain. Get ready. Let's get to business. And that's how it was. So, well, man, we have fun. We have yeah. fun. Let's, uh, now let's talk about a life in baseball. Now that we've kind of disgusted yeah. everybody who's listening, let's talk about a life in baseball. I, I once went back to Stockton, California, where you grew up, uh, yeah. and, and saw the fields you played on, talked to the people you knew. Uh, I got the sense that, that growing up wasn't, uh, you didn't grow up in a, the best neighborhood, maybe? <laughs> How would you want to describe well, it? Well, actually, Soup, it's kind of worse now. Yeah. But it was worse where I grew up. And you, you experienced that, I think, a little bit, or the stories you t- heard from my buddies mm-hmm. and parents. Uh, you know what, though? It makes you who you are. Um, I have no regrets on how I grew up. Mm-hmm. You know, we're getting to the serious side of it now, you know, and uh, I think nowadays that you look at the players now or the players then, whatever you might look, 
my dad always taught me how to go get what I want. And no matter what it was, you took pride in it. We didn't have much. Yeah, nine brothers and sisters, goddamn, in a three bedroom house, barely wow. can afford, you know? One bathroom. Fuck. Wow. I don't know how many times I walked in and my dad and my stepmom getting going at it. You know? <laughs> <Good Lord>. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the truth. Yeah. Because you have one bathroom. Yep. So, uh, you know, but I, I won't take that back for anything, man, or else I wouldn't be who I am. You know, enjoy every day. You know, uh, laugh. Appreciate what you have. Appreciate your family, your friends. Appreciate the people that helped you along the way, the coaches. Appreciate the organization that you started with. That's why I'm back here now. Yep. I don't, you know, I don't need to be back here. No. So those are the things. Those are special, man. Those are, those are special things, and uh, people got to, uh, you know, remember those kind of things. And you met Lisa, your wife, in high school or earlier? We went to the same high school. Uh, now, we got to remember this. You know, I like those cougars. Oh, yeah, I know. And I, She's five years older than me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she don't hear this. <laughs> For many reasons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I've been married 20 years. You know, last November was 20 years. And I've met Lisa. She's sharp. Yeah, she's a sharp tool. And I always say this, you know, I got she gave me the best thing ever in life. And I really mean this, is my three lovely kids. Mm-hmm. And I, I think you can... You can appreciate that, right, Soup? Yep. And, so, and is it Nico who's in camp with you? Uh, Jacob was in Jacob's camp. Jacob's in camp. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he just left la- yesterday. And Nico's 18. is going to graduate wow, this year. 18. Yeah. God, that, that means soup? I'm old. Yeah, exactly. Damn. Man. So he graduates. And Ava, I got nine. And Ava's doing well. So I can't complain. Yeah. So you come out of Stockton. You make your way. You, the twins sign you. And... You had great success as a starting pitcher in the minors. I remember one year at Double A was at Nashville. You really lit it up. Right. Uh, how difficult was it to go from kind of top starting pitching prospect to, you know, going through all the different permutations you went through to end up being right. an All Star closer? Well, it was. It's not easy. There's no question. Uh, like I'm telling these these guys now, right now as we speak, it's not your ability. It's your approach every day, your mindset. And people always, you know, they probably look at me like, eh, I don't know, you know. Well, it is, Soup. I know you know this. You've been around a long time. When I made that transition from Double A to the big leagues, was in my mind that I think I was ready? Hell yeah. What are you going to say? No. Mm-hmm. Shit, I was 22 years old. Yep. I come in. I, I Out of 25 starts I have in the big leagues, maybe what? A half for quality? Right. That's not good. I got rocked. Did I know how to handle it at the time? Probably not. Did I learn, have my ears open, want to learn? Absolutely. And I always say, you know, uh, Rick Aguilera. I remember we all mm-hmm. know Rick. I, he, I always looked up to him, and he kind of guided me in that way and says, hey, remember, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. You know, it's going to take time. And it, he's right. It takes time. It don't happen overnight. So that mental approach I had every day where – you're in the big leagues. Is this it? Am I done? Because I'm struggling. 22 years old. They're going to release me. You know, all these thoughts come in your mind. Mm-hmm. And uh, But you know what? I stay positive. I know in 94 when we had that strike and we came back from that yep. spring, I was the first guy cut. Really? I don't remember that. First pitcher cut. Wow. TK sent me in there and cut me. I mean, well, go down to Send, AAA. Right. Send me down. And... You know what? I, there's two things how we can look at it. We can go down with our head between our legs and feel sorry for ourselves, or we can go down, get after it, and see what happens. And well, guess what I did? I went after it and get out see what happened. That same year, I was up in the big leagues. Yep. So those are these, this is what I'm trying to teach these guys. I've been through every fucking scenario yep. that you can do mentally-wise to get where I got now. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to teach now. It's not fucking, hey, you got to get here. with. They know that. Mm-hmm. They fucking know that. It's all about fucking here. How am I get this son of a bitch out any way I can when we tow that fucking rubber? That's how we're going to do it. How today you're not going to go out there with your best stuff every fucking day. That's just the way it is. So whatever I got today and I'm on that rubber, 
I got to figure out how to get bitches out. Figure it out. My job here is when we're done doing that, figure it out what we what we did at that moment. Okay, now here. Hey, you're going too fast here. You're fucking mental here. Come on, slow fucking down. But it's a process. And hopefully they get it. Some do, we're soup, you know it. Some get it, some fucking don't. Yeah. So, do you remember the meeting at which the twins told you they wanted you to be a bullpen guy? Yes, I do. And when did that happen? 95. Okay. Well, 94 at the end. Okay. I was in a bullpen, but I sure didn't know what I was going to do or not. Mm -hmm. But 95 came. Matter of fact, I got a couple starts in 95. And uh, I remember Sachin TK brought me in and said, you know, I was always a max effort guy every time I threw, right? And I guess TK, you know, TK's pretty sharp. And he said, hey, we're going to put you in a bullpen and see how you can do. And I guess what? 95 came around and I found my niche. Yeah. I mean, I went from long man, short, maybe get a lefty here and there. Next thing you know, I'm getting righties now. TK believed in me. Next thing you know, and the, the rest is history. Mm-hmm. And and that's how it happens. But uh, from that stretch on, it's just work, work, work. Mental approach every day. These guys don't understand even these 10 minutes of BP we throw. They think, oh, fuck, I'm just going to throw PB, get my angle, get my no, fuck it. You take it like it's a fucking game. You take 10 minutes like it's a game. Focus on what we're going to do and get bitches out. And that's how you get better. They don't even know they're working on their mental part yet. And when they step off, I go, how you feel? Well, I feel good. Oh, some guys go, eh, this is that. Oh, fuck. Hey, you kept the ball down. You, you, you're aggressive. You threw the fucking ball in the zone. You see what happens. And they don't even know they're fucking doing the, the mental part. You get me? I get you. Yeah. yeah. So it's all good, man. So it all worked out, Soup. It all fucking worked out, man. So you make your way through all those different roles. Then I remember being at Ron Gardenhire's introductory press conference when he became manager, and I asked him after, I said, who's your closer? He said, well, there was some doubt, you know? Who, I said, who's your closer? He said, Eddie. Eddie's my guy. Is that a big day for you? Oh, uh, I remember that, Soup. Mm-hmm. I'll, I remember exactly where I was, too, in Stockton, California, mm-hmm. coming out of the mall. You get the call. And it was you to give me the call. I think so. Yes, sir. And then Gardy gave me the call after. <laughs> I shouldn't have trumped him. My yeah, bad. Yeah, it's okay, though. <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, and uh, when Gardy told me, though, you know, I heard the call from you. I'm just like, oh, shit, okay. And then about five minutes later, I get the call from Gardy. He goes, Eddie, what are you doing? I go, hey, man, what's going on? You know, and he goes, I said, by the way, congratulations first. Yeah. You know. Because me and Gardy went way back from 90. He was here in 92. Yeah. And I was 93, so we're kind of young still. Yeah. And he goes, hey, you're my guy. You're my closer. And I go, F-. I say, are you are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, yeah. Fuck, Eddie, you're going to drop that on me right now? I go, fuck, I'm sorry. But uh, I said, hey, I appreciate it. You know, I'll be ready. Yeah. I said, I'll be ready. And that whole, since then, you know what I mean? When he called me and I went home and I told my wife, man, I fucking have butterflies, bro. Yeah, I was I like, imagine. shit, I better fucking do this. That's a big day. This, well, not only that, man, we're going to fucking, tr- we had a great team. Yeah. I just can't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> I also remember coming down here spring of 2002, Guardy's first year's manager, Rick Anderson's first year's pitching coach, and, you know, you were... You were about to become a closer, so it's a new thing for you. And Latroy Hawkins, to that point in his career, had always shown promise, but had always struggled. Right. And I remember watching Rick Anderson work with you two guys and showing complete confidence in both of you. And from then on, Latroy's had an incredible career. Oh, well, you know, we, me and Latroy go way back minor leagues. That's yep. my boy. Yep. There's no question. And look at what he's doing now. Yeah. What confidence level he's at, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember that. I, I remember that, Soup, and... Uh, but you know what? You, you, you're you talking about personalities now. It's not what Troy throws 98 at the time, right? Right. I'm throwing 92 at 93 at best, which is good mm-hmm. for me. But you're talking about personality now. You're talking about two guys at the end of your fucking bullpen with some fucking nuts. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's what matters. I mean, 
if we we sit here and we talk to guys that yeah they might be great guys now, I'm not knocking nobody but if they don't got inside that fucking gut I'm sorry it's not it's not gonna work it's not gonna work so you're talking about two guys with some personnel with some fucking fire that did what they did and that's what it, it wasn't the confidence level that we didn't have or when Guardy said I was a closer it's good to be nervous but once that ball once when, I remember I remember you I know you know this opening day in Kansas City yep I fucking how many guys did I walk I walked <laughs> three or I walked the bases <laughs> loaded and I'm like oh shit <laughs> but I got it done mm-hmm. I got it done because you know what I I had that fucking that that gunt, that that inside to say there, here bitch hit it, <laughs> and it worked. You try the same way. Here, here's 98 though, hit that bitch. But we know where it's going. We know where it's going, and we believe every pitch that we threw, no matter what how we fell or what the situation, our backs against the wall, we're confident we're gonna get it done. Did we get it done, Soup? Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's what you're talking about. You're talking about the individual. Not because he throws fucking 98. So how many times you see motherfuckers throw 98 now? Uh, it's pretty common. Right? And they can't get it on the fucking plate or they get shellac. Mm-hmm. And they go, what happened? Fucking scared. Fucking scared. That's what I say. So you've been coming down here as uh, a spring training instructor for a while, and now you're here as the bullpen coach. What kind of reaction do you get from young players when you talk to them about exactly this stuff? I think I get it good. Uh, Mike Palfrey said it the other day. Yesterday, we're in the training room. And Mike goes, you know, I usually soup. I come in and have fun. I'm laughing in the morning. Try to get the guys up, you know. And you know me good. You know me, soup. Game time's on. I got a whole different approach. Because that's what you got to have. You can't think, ah, oh, it's got to be. This is what I learned. Is that. You can't let the game control you. You got to control the game. And meaning by saying that is that you can't think baseball 24-7, man. You can't. You got to have fun. You got to enjoy while you're here because we're not here forever. So enjoy it. But at saying that, when it's time to lock down, buckle down, you better be ready to fucking go. So Mike Proffrey said that the other day. I talked to the pitchers, right? And uh, we're talking about preparation, and um, Neil Allen said, Eddie, you got some stuff to say. I said, fucking, yeah, yeah, right, I got something to say. And I went to a whole spill. But my game face was on. It was not laughter. It was here. This time is serious. And Mike Palfrey said that. He goes, hey, I saw the fucking difference in you, Eddie. Mm -hmm. I said, I never saw you like that. I go, it's there. Mm -hmm. It's there. So don't fucking piss me off. But that's the difference, Sue. So I give him a story. You're going to love this one. I'm pitching for Seattle. Mike, Pat Borders was my uh, catcher. Yep. Remember Pat? Yeah, yeah. Love him. I come in. We're facing uh, the White Sox. I love this story because I told that story the other day to these guys. It was uh, 2005. And I come in, right? I didn't feel good. It's okay. I'm throwing 88. I'm topping out at 88 miles an hour. I'm telling these guys the story the other day. I come in. I fucking throw 36 pitches in that inning. I walk a couple. We're up by one. I end up getting two outs. Bases loaded. Guess who's up? Paul Knurkel. Remember Big Paul? Oh, yeah. And I had trouble with Paul during my career. So I'm battling, bro. I'm fucking battling. Soup. Pop up. Game over. Right? I throw 36 fucking fastballs in a row. Oh, my God. Soup. (laughs) In a row. (laughs) Pat Borders walks out. I give him a pump fake. He goes, I can't fucking believe this. (laughs) He goes, you come in huffing and puffing. Fucking come in, you're throwing 88, and they can't hit it 36 times in a row. And I go, he goes, you come in like you throw 100, Eddie. And I swear to you, uh, Soup, I looked at him, I go, I don't. <laughs> but that's the difference, Soup. 
So I told that story to the other guys. The the mentality you got to take every day that you're going to approach that field or hidden wise or whatever it might be, rubber. You got to believe I'm going to get it done today. And that's the story. It's not about me anymore. It's about you competing every day through the grind, through the hurt and aches and whatever you, you fucking want to call it. But you got to go out and compete because you owe that to yourself. And not only that, you owe that to your fucking teammates and the organization that's paying you. So that was good. Speaking of uh, tight <laughs> spots and throwing a lot of pitches, I, you know, one of the, the, the great scenes I've ever seen covering sports was 2002, Game 5, Oakland. Latroy comes in, hits 100 on the gun, <laughs> and they bring in Eddie, and you had an adventure. Oh, those are the times. You know, can we say we go out there and feel great every time? If you would ask me that soup, and I and I remember you, were, you know, covering it, and how'd you feel? I felt great, got it done. But to be honest with you, hey, times were at that time. I'll be honest, I was going through a little dead arm. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not gonna tell nobody that, right? You know, hey, you got to get it fucking done no matter what. And the conversation, right, where we're having. And yeah, I struggled. I gave what a two run, three run bomb to Mark Ellis. Yep, hanging fucking slider. I don't fucking throw sliders to right. <laughs> <laughs> Doing. Right, right, but getting at my game, thinking I got to do something different because I don't have my shit. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, in the big game. Yep. So finally, what I do to Ray Durham soup? Do you remember that? Uh, tell me I'll about. Tell you. I remember high fastballs. My location was off. Mm-hmm. I threw him thirteen straight fucking fastballs. Mm-hmm. He fouled them off. Guess what? The thirteenth. Pop up the Denny Hawk and catch game over. We win. Yep. But again, did I have my good shit at the time? No. Did I get it done? Absolutely. <laughs> Imagine that. Huh? That was a, that was a that was a that was what, an amazing game. Was I fucking uh, like think? Oh my god. <laughs> was I sitting in the Oakland dugout going, "Oh fuck, I got it done." <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Tori also told me another story. Uh, this one is cleaner. Thank God. He said, he said, there's a clean one in there. Yeah, how about that? He said, the first time he faced you after you went to Seattle. Oh, yeah. He said, you made a, you like stuck your tongue out at him. <laughs> he said, in a sexual way. <laughs> and he stuck his tongue out at me in a sexual way. I just, yeah. He said, he had to step out of the box uh. and laugh. And said, you were, you, you were having trouble not laughing. Oh. You remember that one? I remember. It was 04, bro. When yep. I first. When I left the Twins and right. you guys came out, we opened up with you. Mm-hmm. What a coincidence, right? And uh, I got the it was the fucking first game of the year. <laughs> I'm facing my old team for years, right? Here comes story. I mean, I think everybody that I face, Koski and Jock, and I'm like, they're all laughing like, oh, fuck, we're going to get you, baby. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 oh. So Tori comes up. And I go, yeah, I got him. And you know me, Soup, at the time, I was, I was fucking puffing and huffing. and It's all a fucking show to get these <laughs> motherfuckers going, right? I look at Tori and I stick my tongue out, dude. He says, time out! <laughs> <laughs> he gets a time out. I step off and go, oh, fuck. <laughs> and he's laughing. He's like, come on, man. And I, you know, and the rest is history. But, you know. See, those are the things we can talk about now. Those are fun times. Absolutely. You know? He also remembers getting a hit off you. Do you remember that one? Yes, I do. A fucking hanging splitty, fucker. <laughs> I said, why did I throw you a slow-ass bat of hanging splitty? <laughs> <laughs> but he did over there. Koski scores. And remember this. You got to remember this, though. Koski scores. We tie the game. I'm like, God damn. So I'm backing up home, right? Oh, no, no. Koski scores. He's out. Yep, he texted me this, this story the other day. Right, okay, he thought out. he was safe. He said he got thrown out of the game because he was so sure he was safe, yeah. but he got called out. So I'm behind there, right? They call him out, and I look at Costco. Yeah, fuck yeah, <laughs> right? He lo- he looks at the umpire. He goes, "That's a bunch of baloney." <laughs> I go, "Fucking go in the dugout, kick him out." <laughs> Get this fucker out. <laughs> That's so typical, Corey, though. He wouldn't well, cuss. Exactly. Yeah? Baloney. I go, really? Cuss? Really? You're going to say baloney? 
I don't know who it was, Jim Joyce or something. Get the fucker out. <laughs> Koski said he only got thrown out twice in his career, and that was one of them. Yeah, it was fun, but uh, good times, man. Good times. Tell me about, you know, we all were used to seeing you pitch, and then you become the closer, and all of a sudden you're coming in to rock and roll and doing some kind of weird dance behind the mound. Well, so, see, thing is, a lot of people don't know, I used to do that all the time, even when I was out We just didn't notice? Role. That's right. You oh, see wow. how, how funny it is? That's when funny. When you become a closer, yeah. everybody knows it's everything, right? Well, I was doing that for a while. Grant coming to the sprinting, sprinting to the... Uh, infield I remember the line. sprinting. Yeah. Yep. Then I started grabbing my crotch. And then nice I remember, touch. Listen, I start grabbing my crotch. Now, one day, I get a I got a little pink note in my fucking locker, and it's from TK, and uh, we're really uh, offended by what Eddie's doing. <laughs> and I go to TK, I go, what is this? He goes, see, Eddie, that's the fucking shit I got to deal with. <laughs> I go, well, TK, it's not going to stop because I'm doing pretty fucking good. He goes, I know. <laughs> so who was it? Who wrote the note? Uh, it was some fan. I don't know who oh, it was. Oh, fan. Yeah, okay. I thought, so, it was a, I thought it was a teammate messing with you. But, uh, I, you know, I now they're playing uh, uh, Thunderstruck. Yep. And, uh, you know, everything worked out. So, uh, you know, coming in, I remember, you know, game one of the ALCS against Anaheim. One zero, mm-hmm. fifty five plus. So mm-hmm. it doesn't get any better than that. And uh, chanting your name, I got a good three motherfucking outs here. What, what a thrill! Yeah. Now that's just the ALCS. Yeah, I'm facing the top of the lineup: Anderson, uh, Erstad, Gloss, and Salmon. Pretty good. Yep. Fucking game will. First guy struck out. Everybody, well, let's take it back first. I'm throwing my warm-ups. A thunderstruck's blasting. Everybody's. Homer Hankies. <clears throat> We're getting after it. I took my warm-ups. AJ throws it down. Slam the rosin bag. Get on the mound. And I always told my all I told myself is don't throw this fucking ball over the screen. <laughs> Positive thoughts. Oh, there's a bottle of water there if you need a drink. Yeah, take, a drink. take a break. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I got that first out, and everything kind of calmed down. Yeah. And uh, what a what a fucking feeling, though. Yeah. And and for you guys to go from almost, you know, I mean, the rumor was <clears> going to be contracted to having a good 2001 season and fading, and then actually going to the ALCS and winning a game, uh, 2002. That was uh, that was something. Well, so I know I, I know it started in 01, though. Yeah. Well, it started way back, but 01 is where we saw a little light at the end of the tunnel. I think you remember that, right? Mm-hmm. We are playing good, and we are playing for something in September, at the, finally after eight, nine years. Yep. And we kind of fell off, but it, we saw and we felt it, how, how special that was. And we kept that core group, and remember, it added somebody here and there, like a Mike Jackson, a veteran guy. Mm-hmm. That helped out a lot, too. You know? It's amazing. Uh, how many players talk about Mike Jackson? Corey Koski, I had lunch with Corey Koski the other day. He was telling me Mike Jackson was a big guy for you guys. Big guy. Well, you're talking about a guy that pitched over 1,000 games in the big leagues. Mm-hmm. Guy that was older than all of us, and, and we were still learning too, you know. And you got a veteran like him that took the ball and, and, and had some fucking nuts and helped you out. Oh, what a huge difference. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, if Mike – you know, we, we're going to do our job, but Mike definitely helped a lot of us out. There's no question. And you need that guy, you know, especially when you're in a – when you're trying to do something special. And we had a special team already. To add somebody like him, fuck, it just got better, you know. And he did a jo- good job coming out of the bullpen, if he you did. remember. He did a really good job. But, you know, that's 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 what it's all about, man. And, and you know, it's funny that – we're talking about this because when when O one came along, O two I mean O one yeah okay, you know September came along you know we fell off a little but we saw the light and T K I remember in Detroit our last game, guys, it, it's something here special, and nobody had no idea T K was done right, but he goes the light is at the end I saw I seen it, 
it's there, guys. Now go get it. You know, I remember that. Mm-hmm. That's that's shit, shit is goosebumps. Yeah. You know. So Guardy obviously got all you know. Came Guardy the manager, and we come out here. We come to spring, and oh two man, what a what a what a ball, what a ball we had, and everything came at the right time. And I think um, learning from TK and you know Guardy and. You know, Rick Anderson and Scotty Olger, all these guys, man, it, it was all nothing but good shit. And you know that. You've been around long. And, you know, we. I take, you know, you call them coaches, whatever you want to call them. I call them my friends. Yeah. You know, and it's all about who you are at the end of the day. I remember I did a podcast with Roy Smalley a ways back, and he was telling stories about TK. And he said, you know, he, he and TK weren't close you know right. they didn't always hit it off exactly but he said that what he really loved about tk was one year in 87 uh they had just gotten killed in a game in boston and some of the hitters are kind of griping about the pitching and you know there's a little bit of just grumbling in the clubhouse he said tk got on the team bus and said hey there's no pitchers versus hitters hitters versus pitches we're all one team we're all going to pull an oar and we're all going to win or lose together and that's all there is and he said it was just the perfect speech at the perfect time and they just went on a tear after that well <clears throat> tk that's why he's good because he a good coach a good manager at the right time says the right things you know and, and you just don't go blabber 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 just to hear yourself you know, because the team is on a 10-game losing streak that you go fucking beat up your team. In a, but you know what? If you hit if you hit it right, it works. But you know what? If you, if you really hear the message, TK always talks. If you hear the message, just don't hear it. Just hear the message, what he's trying to bring across. It's always about life. It's always about life. It's not about baseball. Just hear the message. And then you get it. And then you feel a little bit better. Then you you play a little bit better, and then fuck. Guess what? We're we're on ten winning game winning streak. I mean, mm-hmm. seriously, that's how it happens. But it's not always about fucking baseball. It's about life and how you approach baseball and approach life. That's that's what makes you, right, Sue? That's what makes you, and that's how I approach it. That's why you we laugh every day and have fun. What the fuck am I gonna complain about? I fucking got money. I got fucking played seventeen years in the big leagues. I got beautiful white kids. The fuck am I gonna be down about? Because I give up a home run in the ninth? Okay, I'll get you tomorrow because I'm gonna work. It's who I am. It's who you are as a person that go out there every day and battle. And at the end of the day, when you lay your fucking head down, I tell these guys that. All we got is who who we are at night. I mean, as a person, and if you got a wife and you got kids, that's what really fucking matters. Think about it. Do we want to go do a job and go and perform? Absolutely. Who don't? This is all I know. No shit. But guess what? What really matters, and if you learn this, is what you got at home. And when you figure that out, you're going to be better off. Let's talk about another key person in your career and in the Twins organization, Terry Ryan. Yeah. So Terry's the GM when you come up. Terry's the GM when it's time for you to leave. Uh, I talked to Terry about this the other day, you know, you guys, I mean, Terry brought you back. He values you. But there was a time when you guys had a little bit of a disagreement. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got to remember, uh, Andy McPhail was my first manager. Okay, you're you right, know? you're right. Yeah. Man, I go way back. You yeah. Know? Know, but Terry was the scouting director That's at right. the time. And I remember this. I'm in Kenosha, Wisconsin. I didn't know Terry very well. You know, I'm first, first full season. Mm-hmm. Right? He used to come out, throw BP, and, you know, and. You know, mingle with the guys and stuff. And I remember I, I was struggling at Kenosha. <clears throat> and this is how I know how Terry was forward. I'm shagging the bucket, right? He comes, he goes, hey, Eddie, how's it going? It's going good, Terry. He goes, how'd you feel yesterday? And those kind of questions coming from a guy like that, you they want to hear, oh, is he going to have an excuse? Mm-hmm. I go, hey, I just fucked up. He goes, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> but I'm I'm honest, too, you know. But then now we go, he's jammed, and we're going off, and, you know, we assembled this team we had, and, you know, it was time for, I believe it was 02, after my 02 season, yep. 03. Yeah, we butted heads. 
But see, Soup, and did we butt heads pretty good? Absolutely. But did I ever just not respect the guy? I mean, did I always respect him? Absolutely. But when it came to business, I had no idea about it. I just like playing baseball, man. Mm -hmm. But what really hurts sometimes in the business of the game is that they got to make business decisions. And it's tough ones. I told Terry after all this shit, I go, I know it's, you got a hard job, bro. I know you do. It's not easy to go release somebody or this is after so much, amount, so much money that you can't do it. I get it. Now I get it. Before I did it. You know, I, I became more wiser in that kind of aspect. Yeah. But then, you know, when you're so loyal and, and to the organization and, and uh, you give it all your heart, your hard work, your sweat, and not only for yourself, but you know what? You try to give it back because you owe it to the organization to give you opportunity. But then when business came through, I didn't know how to handle that part. So I want haywire, right? Was it wrong? Am I sorry I did it? Uh, well, at the time, I didn't know. Now I'm wiser, so probably say yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you this. You know, we didn't talk for a while. I'm sure. I'm not sure if he told you that or anything. But, but when he retired, I called him. And I left a message on his answer machine. I said, "Hey, Terry, Eddie Gordado, boom, boom." And I told him, "I said, hey, man, <clears throat> I know we had we butted heads, but I want to tell you, man, you did a hell of a job. Your job's not easy. I understand. I understand now." Mm-hmm. I said, I understand your job, but you got to do some things you don't want to do, but you only do anything because you think it's right. I get it. And it sucks when you have to do s release guys and, you know, whatever it might be. And it sucks. So I just want to tell you, you did, you're a hell of a GM, bro. You did a hell of a job. Good luck in your next chapter in your life. And I think it's going to be well. So, you know, hang out, boom, boom. So he calls me back. He leaves the answer in the machine, a message, because I didn't answer. I didn't. He leaves a good message. He goes, Eddie, God damn it. You know, he goes, you know, I appreciate the call. I got a hundred of them. <laughs> he goes, I have to say, though, from the bottom of my heart, that might have been the classiest call I got. Wow. So I'm hearing this. Yeah. And I show, I heard, you know, it's show, I mean, I let said, at least I hear this. And you know, kind of, it kind of got soft, yeah. Because, <clears throat> you know, he uh, he's a good man. There's no question. Tough, tough job he's got. There's no question. But, you know, that was the story on that. And, um, you know, we he invited me to spring, and you know, I, I, I am who I am, soup. And I, I'm not scared to speak my mind. Maybe I'm wrong at some sometimes, but I'm learning too, man. We all learn. We never stop learning. You know, and I and TK, I mean um, Terry Ryan. You know, hey, look at where I'm at now. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Last topic, and I'll let you get on your way, Eddie. I uh, appreciate all the time. This has been great stuff. Um, even if some of it scares me a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> scares me too. Shit. It, it is interesting. You know, I mean Terry Ryan trades Doug McCavich away, and Doug's back. It is a big part of the organization. Uh, you know, Tory leaves and isn't happy about it and Tory's back you're back uh you know at, you know hell they fired ryan gardner and offered him a job you know i mean yeah. it, it it is interesting is that is that terry that's terry yeah. um you know like i always said terry's a straightforward guy there's no qu i love it i mean i mean i think we all need that right do we like to hear the truth and sometimes absolutely not but you know what? At the long run, it's better. Uh, but you know what? Again, look at those names you named. Look at the person, just the the person itself. That's why they're back. It's because who they are. And not only what they've done in the game or this organization, but who they are as a person. Terry likes those kind of people. I, in my eyes, that's what I think. You know, he might not be out far with it, you know, but. And back in his mind, he likes those guys. He likes the guys who've got little fucking balls between their legs. <laughs> you know, even though we butted heads, probably all of them with him. Yeah. But 
he likes those guys. Yeah. And look at what we got. I mean, hopefully we're in the right direction here. And uh, I'm sure with Molly, with the helm, man, we're going to do pretty good. But that's who Terry is. And that's who he surrounds himself with while well, in, this, in this clubhouse, you know, with good quality human beings, not fucking idiots. Pretty good. Great stuff. This is uh, Suhan Unfiltered at SuhanUnfiltered.com. You can also find the podcast via iTunes and iHeartRadio at Suhan-Unfiltered. This is the Alive and Social Network. Thanks again to my sponsors, all the places I drink too much. The local Irish pub, Kieran's Irish pub, O'Gara's Irish pub. Yeah, Eddie, I drink too much. I'm yeah, an Irish fuck. guy. Let me go. It's, it's all right. It's a stereotype, but it's a stereotype I, I fulfill. I appreciate that. I might need it. <laughs> And that has been Eddie Guardado. Uh, I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your uh, you're not censoring your own language. I'm not sure I appreciate the toothbrush story, but I'll try to I'll try to get my head around it. I definitely will not be bringing my toothbrush to the Twins Clubhouse anytime soon. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man.